morning, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal on a very different Monday morning. Different because it is three degrees here in southern British Columbia, and that's 38 in America. It's getting a little chilly. <laughs> And so I just wanted to let you know that um, I wasn't expecting it to be quite this cold this morning. If it gets much colder, I'll have to pull out the winter coat. Or at least find the liner for my raincoat. Seriously, it's quite nippy. <laughs> However, there are nice breaks in the sky. I can see blue sky, so it looks pretty, which is probably why it's so cold. Um, and I have to remember, it is November. And it's getting to look a lot like Christmas, if you know what I mean. Um, so, <laughs> why am I surprised? I guess I'm not really. So what's with the weekend update? Well, it's been a bit of a chaotic weekend for me. Um, this morning, everybody in the house was sort of up and at a bit earlier than normal because round about now, they are pulling the plug on all our electricity uh, on the house and with my neighbors as well. They are redoing the electrical cables to a few houses on my street. Now, what they did is they sent us a notification and said, you know, turn off your appliances, your electronics, you know, and a whole long list of what we had to do. And what we actually did is just turn off the breakers. <laughs> because it's a lot quicker. <laughs> And also, it means that when we do the startup again, uh, you know, we can do it bit by bit. You know, it's not like one sudden jolt of, of using power. So, I guess it's a personal preference, but for a lot of you, you may want to think about that if ever you have to do that, which is, it's a lot easier just to turn the breakers off than it is to literally go through your house and pull your fridge out, pull your stove out, you know, and pull all the plugs on all your major appliances, your freezers, your, yeah. Ugh. So, <laughs> a lot easier. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of it, but I didn't. So that was quite a discussion over dinner last night, how we were going to do that as a family. And, uh, we got it done. I also had a great meeting with my neighbor, um, as you might have heard. Actually, why would you, unless you were on the broadcast? I think I discussed it a bit on the broadcast. But anyway, I got to meet uh, my neighbor from the, you know, the one onto whom the trees fell. Um, and we had a really nice discussion. I handed over my share of the cost of the fence. Um, which is yet to be built, but what I did is I gave him two separate checks, one for right now and one for when it's finished, because basically my neighbor is going to pay for it and it, it will be claimed on his um, insurance. So but what, a, what a fun guy, a really nice guy. And then in the same breath he tells us he's putting his house up for sale this week. Really? <laughs> we just got, got to know you. <laughs> but he has decided that's what he's going to do for the next couple of years is buy a house, renovate it, um, turn it over and put some money in the bank. I was a bit shocked about how much he's asking for the house, which was interesting. But he definitely has a lot more land than I do, and the money is in the land, not in the buildings, as you all know. Now, my house is still looking like a bomb hitter because we're still sort of repainting stuff in my 
bedroom. I think the closet is now done. That's great. My clothes are all back in, so that's even better. I say all of them, and it's not true. Most of them. Uh, I've also been repainting the bedroom door. That was desperately in need of some paint. You know, it's a case of, you can almost hear the, the paintwork going, Shh, please. And you know, it seems like yesterday that I did it, but I realize it's five years ago. Um, and so it is time to give it another quick coat of paint. And there's no doubt about it, if you can do that every five years, at least, um, the house will look pretty cared for. We had a na made another major discussion uh, as a, a family, if you like, um, about this whole issue about the driveway. As some of you may know, I've got a neighbor who has a shared driveway. We have like four lanes of driveway between us. Uh, it's one solid mass of concrete driveway. And um, she's going to be repaving half of hers with rubberized covering. And I'm not 100% sure that's, you know, what I want to spend money on right now. Because although it's apparently amongst the cheapest choice, it's still not the choice I would choose, necessarily. Um, I don't know enough about it. I haven't seen it. I also know that my driveway's got some cracks in it and got some grass growing through in places, but it actually isn't that bad, in my view. You'll be pleased to know that the duck sanctuary is full of ducks this morning. Yay! Time for another walk there, I think. and the fog is down low. This is always the low point, it's the low point of the drive. And so whenever it's foggy, this is where it's going to be foggy or misty or whatever. And it really is this morning. The visibility is about a block, I would think, a bit more maybe. But it's definitely reduced visibility. So what's our word for the day? I would have to say for me, the word for the weekend was insecure. I had a really insecure weekend for some reason. I don't know what, what was going on. Um, but sometimes that happens, you know, the, the two brain cells were not working in the right direction for some reason. So, but you know, I had quite a discussion about this on the broadcast on Sunday, which would have been yesterday, <laughs> about the fact that that's what I promised myself, you know, that if I was going to become a YouTuber, if I was going to do these sort of vlogs, that I would stay honest about those things. And so we had quite a discussion on yesterday's broadcast about the fact that that's how I was feeling. and. that I chose not to hide it, that I you know, wanted to discuss it. And it was amazing how many people were grateful for that. And, um, and they were saying, you know, because I do talk about it, it makes it feel so much better when they're feeling down. And I said, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's causing it. I mean, I have no reason to be that, that um, questioning of myself. But it just, you know, it just happened. I've had a funny, strange sort of couple of months of it. I don't know quite what's going on. I think part of me is beginning to seriously realize I probably need to retire pretty soon. And that's scary to me um, because it affects so much of my life. But again, there's the other part of me that goes, I really... I really want to make sure that if I do it, that I can do it and uh, be okay, if you like. The other 
part of me though goes, you know, I'm probably not the only person that feels a little concerned about this. I heard this weekend that Canada has won the award for the freest country in the world. The country, you know, if you ever talk about the land of the free, apparently it is Canada. Um, which I found really interesting in terms of our freedom to freedom of speech, our freedom of diversification, our freedom of you know, religion, our freedom of it goes on and on and on and on. There's a, quite a criteria to it. But you know that I look at it and I go, gosh, how lucky am I that I'm in a country where at least some pension will be available to me. Um, where I've got a healthcare system that will look after me and will proportionately pay more of my medical, my medicines. So, you know, I look at it and I go, I've got a lot to be grateful for here. Not scared, grateful. And so part of my job in the next year, perhaps, is to actually do what needs to be done to look forward to it rather than to dread it. And I think that would be where the fear is. It's about, I'm a little bit scared about how do I do this? You sort of get used to, seriously? Could you just move a little bit farther forward? Or would you like me to push you, ma'am? I've just missed a traffic light. Because this driver decided to leave two car lengths between herself and the next car. Well, it probably was any a car lengths, but it felt like two. <laughs> no, I haven't missed the traffic light. Yay. Take it back, man. So, I've got to learn how to um, get positive about this rather than feel scared about it. I know it's going to mean a lot of changes. I'm going to have to change my lifestyle quite a bit to live within the means of a pension. But I guess it's doable. I just have to do it the right way. Not quite sure what that is right now, but time to do some research. So for those of you who are viewers who have retired, perhaps you could give me some experiences or what was your biggest challenge or biggest surprise or whatever you know just let's talk about that and for those of you who are young let me just tell you one thing don't wait until you're my age to worry about how you're going to retire start saving for it right now because if you do by the time you get to be my age You won't even give it a second thought. You'll go, I've worked a lifetime, now I can retire and enjoy it. Okay, everybody, so having said that, I'm gonna reframe because I don't want to go to work on a insecure feeling. <laughs> that would be a terrible way to start a Monday. So I want to make sure that you all know how grateful I was to, for all the, for the discussions that we had on the broadcast this weekend and how many of you lifted me up um, in terms of what we're doing and how we're doing it. And I wanted to give a particular shout out to Elizabeth from Virginia who, bless her heart, uh, actually asked point blank, how do I get to join these groups of people that are helping other people? What a nice thing to ask. The way that we do that is, you know, we get to know you and we get to know what it is that you enjoy doing the way in which you like to support. We have people who really like to be emotional support. We have others that like to support people by making them laugh, you know, taking them out of themselves. We have all sorts of different groups of people. We have people who have been through catastrophic illness themselves um, and so know how to deal with people who are going through that. 
but basically what we are is just a group of people that like to support each other and whether that's practically in terms of you know how do you shut down your house for a major electrical rewire uh, being done by the city <laughs> or how do you cope with this or that or the other you know it's like we've all got different stresses that hit our lives every day and the whole idea of Dear Mama Sal is to hopefully no not hopefully we, we actually do give a lot of information uh, over the time period in a sort of hopefully chatty way um, that help people cope better and I think that was the great great joy of listening last night was or yesterday afternoon was how many people were busy explaining how, how many bits of information they'd received in a year or two years that had dramatically changed their lives and that just by regularly being there you know we got to discuss things that were maybe not our issue that day but boy you know when it came up for our, us later or for somebody else that we knew we had a much better idea of how to handle it very rewarding indeed very rewarding so have an awesome day week month whatever it is that you're about to hit and most of all understand that if you have a couple of down days feeling a little insecure feeling that you're a little small that it's not just other people that do it to you, you can do it to yourself. And I can't help wondering now whether the fact that I was giving it a lot of thought last week, this whole issue of being small, whether or not it had an effect on me. So <laughs> perhaps it would make sense <laughs> that I spend a couple of days talking about how to build yourself up once you're there. <laughs> That's quite funny. I hadn't thought of that. I wonder if that was the reason. Really interesting. Hmm. Okay, having said that, have an awesome week, everybody. I intend to. I only hope that by the time I get back tonight, the electricity will be back on again or as we call it here in Canada, the hydro, uh, will be back on and my house will be warm. We've been very smart. We decided we'd leave a couple of breakers on. One was for the furnace and one was for the lights for when I... <laughs> the lights downstairs for when I come in the house tonight. Um, so the rest of it we've killed. <laughs> Now, if it all goes well, which we pray it will, uh, I'll get back tonight and everything will be absolutely fine. The only thing we'll need to do is to flip a couple of breakers back on again and life will continue as it should. And that, I think, is the same as having a few down days, which is, it's okay as long as you don't go into a, too big a pity party. Uh, if you're in a pity party, then, you know, that's a whole other thing. But uh, if you just have a couple of days where you question, I always think that that's sort of a leveling thing. Keeps you humble. This is dear Mama Sal saying, have an awesome day. Be grateful for the sunshine if you've got it. Be grateful for the fact that... <laughs> in Oh, look at that, it's up to six degrees already. We've doubled the temperature in my drive time. Yay! <laughs> it's going to be a sunshiny day. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day.